I'm going to show you how to set up your Air 3 to have the most cinematic settings possible for capturing video. So the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit of theory, and this is going to relate to shutter speed and frame rate. And there's a theory out there called the 180 degree rule of shutter, which basically is saying just make sure your shutter speed is double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you want your shutter speed at 1 60th frames per second. Or if you're shooting at 24, you want your shutter speed at 1 50th. And at this ratio, essentially the camera is going to be capturing motion in the same way we perceive it in real life, which is when you see moving objects, motion is blurred in real life. That's how our brain processes it. And we want our cameras to mimic that exactly because that feels natural, the motion feels smooth and cinematic. And if you're not shooting at that frame rate to shutter speed ratio, oftentimes the shutter speed will be too high to capture motion the same way we perceive it in real life. And that causes the viewer of your footage to be a little bit jarred. It doesn't look natural, it looks jittery, jittery and causes confusion. Now let's get into the actual settings and set this thing up. So we're gonna go first into video mode and immediately take it out of auto mode. And this is gonna unlock essentially all the settings that we're gonna wanna change anyway. So we're gonna click right in here. And on the first screen, we're gonna have white balance. This one's kinda up to you. You can leave it in auto if you want, or you can lock it off. Generally, I'm gonna always be locking it off if I'm shooting outside. My white balance is anywhere between 5,000 and 5,600, kind of depending on what the light's doing. At like golden hour, you're pushing more towards 5,600. Midday, your kind of light source is about 5,000. So anywhere between that solid, or you can leave it in automatic if you're not comfortable with white balance yet. Next is resolution and frame rate. I'm gonna have this thing in 4K, which looks beautiful on this drone and 30 frames per second. Now you could also do 24 frames per second if you want. That's also very popular amongst cinematographers, but 24 or 30 for regular speed motions, ideal. Next, we're gonna scroll down. D-Log M is gonna capture the absolute most information that we possibly can on this drone, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to do a little bit of color in post, but generally this is gonna capture the absolute most information this sensor possibly can. Now we're gonna switch it over to the camera settings over here. ISO, I'm gonna take it out of auto. So it's at 100. You always want this ISO the lowest possible. It's gonna be the least amount of grain and noise. Um, as you go over 400 on this camera, you will start to notice noise. So I'd like to keep it under 400 whenever possible. Shutter speed, like I was saying before, we want that to be double the frame rate. So this is, in this instance, frame rate is 30. My shutter speed is going to be 1 60th. And in order to do that, you have to click out of auto and then you scroll over over to 1 60th. Now, what's gonna happen here is the second you go outside, you're gonna notice that it's completely overexposed and that's because this aperture is fixed. At 1.7, you go outside, way too much light is coming in and that's where you're going to need ND filters to help you out and cut that exposure and balance it. So next, you're gonna need to figure out how much ND strength that you actually need to balance that exposure. So there's two ways of doing this. The first way, you could actually put ISO into auto. And what that's gonna do is just create a little bit of leniency for you when you're shooting outdoors. You can throw pretty much the heaviest neutral density filter you have. Uh, for us, it's the ND64 on there, like midday. And if, as long as your ISO's in auto, it'll actually push between like 100 to 200 or 100 and 400 in order to compensate as lighting changes. And usually that's gonna be totally fine. You're not gonna see any noise in post. But generally, I don't like to do this. I like to lock ISO off completely and fully control it. And what's gonna happen is if lighting does change at all, like a half a stop or a full stop when you're out shooting, you're gonna have to compensate for that in post editing. Uh, it's really hard to just make micro adjustments and you're not always gonna wanna be landing the drone, putting a different level ND filter on and sending it back up. So micro adjustments in post, but if you don't wanna be doing any of the exposure adjustments in post, just put it in auto and remember if you come inside to take the ND filter off cause it's gonna get super noisy if you leave that thing on there and you're shooting in low light. Now let me show you how to determine which ND strength you need for each lighting scenario. So put the drone wherever you're gonna be shooting. 
make sure no filter is on, and we're gonna move our shutter speed here until we see our exposure value at zero, and we're gonna grab that number. So if you know how stops work, you just basically need to see how many stops away from 1 60th you are. Now, if you don't know how stops work, there's a sweet little app called Flare you can download, and it's kind of hacking this app. Uh, but what you're doing is you go into the long exposure calculator and you enter in the native shutter speed that you're reading right now. So if my camera is natively shooting 1 1,000th right now with an EV at zero, which it's showing, I can just scroll across the filters here until I see 1 60th and boom, that's the ND16 four stop filter. So this is just the easy way to hack it if you're not comfortable with stop measurements in your head. So I throw my ND16 filter on here, slide my shutter speed back to 1 60th, everything looks beautiful, and now we're ready to shoot. And all your settings are dialed in at this point. Now the last thing you've gotta do is go out and buy some Polar Pro ND filters to make sure you can hit those shutter speeds at the perfect frame rate to shutter speed ratio when filming outdoors. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below, happy to answer them. We'll see you on the next one.